Hi, good morning. Tuesday morning, June 15th. Here we are in Joshua 8, finishing this chapter. I'll wait to see if anybody can hop on with me. And um, it's good to see you all. I've been inviting people the last week to start with us because we're at least still in the first few chapters of Joshua. We have the whole summer to complete this. And I want to keep telling people who have the summer free that they can um, come along with us. Hi, Michelle. So today, uh, well, yesterday we were in Joshua 8 and um, we didn't finish. So we'll finish Joshua 8 today. We've got about 15 more verses to go through. Good morning, Gail. And um, yeah, so we're going to just kind of go on from, remember, this is the book we're in, Courage to Conquer. The Passion Translation, if you want, if you're on here with us for the first time today and you want to order this, it's available on Amazon. If you need help getting it, let me know. Um, and um, we're on page 26 at the very bottom um, where we're going to start our reading today. So um, this is the book that we're using. Uh, if you been on here before with me it's been over a year ago i can't remember it was two years ago i think that we were in the same it looked exactly like this we were in the book of isaiah from the passion translation so some of you already have that copy as well and um so this is the one though that we're in today because it's hot off the press the newest release from the bible hi marie good morning all right, so here we are, um, the bottom of page 26. What we were saying yesterday, I'll pick up the last two scriptures um, from what we were talking about when Joshua took um, the spear in his hand um, and pointed it towards Ai and uh, God, Yahweh, God had said to him, you know, take this up and hold it in your hand, pour, point it towards the city and I'll hand the city over to you. So Joshua pointed the spear toward the city. And when Joshua gave the signal, which was the pointing of the spear, all the men waiting in ambush behind the city, he'd sent troops behind the city, um, jumped up from their position and poured into Ai. And they quickly captured it and set it on fire. So we were talking about um, in the last week or so burn it to the ground we've been talking about how we want to get our jerichos um, burnt to the ground the things in our life that are resistant to the will of god the re resistant to god's plan for us resistant to god's best for us we're all figuring out what those things are with the lord and when he says burn it to the ground we quickly respond so we're getting strategies don't you think and um, here these men quickly captured it and set it on fire. Okay, so that's where we pick it up today. We're in verse 20. When the men of Ai looked back, they saw the smoke of their city rising to the sky. Joshua and his men also saw the smoke and knew that the other Israelite soldiers had captured the city and had set it on fire. The army of Ai had no place to escape. This is where we want to have the Lord, his instruction, put our enemy in a place where there is no escape. Um, so Joshua and his men turned on them and began killing them. This is where you have to take up your sword Take up your spear in the in the um, the word, and begin to destroy the enemy, where there's no place to escape for your for your enemy. The men who had taken the city came out. So more of the Israelite troops that were in the city, and they joined the battle. 
So the Israelites had them surrounded. I think of that, I don't know, that worship song just came in my mind. Um, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Remember that? This is how I fight my battle. It may look like I'm surrounded, but really the enemy was surrounded. They had them surrounded. Israel was cut, Israel cut them down, leaving neither survivors nor fugitives. But they captured the king of Ai alive and brought him to Joshua. So in this sense, um, it'd be like the principality over the, or the territorial spirit caught alive. As I keep reminding you that we're in a spiritual battle. And bring him to the Lord. And Joshua's men killed all the inhabitants of Ai in the fields and in the wilderness. They'd been driven into the wilderness. And that's where they met their death. Where they had, this is where they had been chased. They all fell by the sword. And remember, the word of God is um, the sword of the spirit. And our enemies will fall by the sword of the spirit. Then the Israelites, before I go on, do we believe that though? Okay. Then, uh, then the Israelites turned to attack Ai and killed those who were still there. So all of the people that were left in the city were killed. The entire time Joshua kept his spear pointed at Ai until the destruction was complete. So the entire time he had to hold up the word of the Lord, the sword, the spear, until the battle was complete. And Ai's entire population, 12,000 men and women, fell that day. <laughs> Marie and Gail and I live here in Redding, California. Hi, Caitlin. Um, and I would assume that the population is about that. I've heard 9,000, but if you pick up <clears throat> uh, the communities around us, I don't, you know, I'm just saying for the three of us to get some perspective, it would mean that the entire population here would be killed. That's how how we have to think about um, the brutality of this, the determination of this, the obedience and the actions that caused this great victory. Um, it says in verse 27, however, the Israelites took the livestock and the goods captured in the city as Yahweh had instructed Joshua. I don't know if you remember yesterday, I was saying some some of the people were a position to hide in secret. Some people, some of the warriors had uh, torches or something that they were going to be burning with. Some of them had their swords drawn. Some of them um, were plundering and pulling out um, the things that were of value. And some of them were leading out the livestock. Can you imagine? I don't know which way they went with all these livestock all these animals but they were um, they were organized and instructed to not let them burn so they had to get them out of there and that would provide for the Israelites that would bring back food and provision for them um, so that's another strategy there's some things um, that we have to hear the Lord on because back in verse two, he said, this time, however, you may take the plunder, including the livestock. They got in trouble in, in um, Jericho because, or I'm sorry, they got in trouble in the, the chapter before where they took, um, not Jericho, where they took the, um, calls them cursed things, the robe, Achan had taken, oh yes, it was Jericho. Uh, they took, sorry, I'm getting confused. 
Achan took the robe and he took the gold and the silver and the, and the Lord hadn't said that that belonged to them. He'll tell us what belongs to us and what doesn't belong. And so um, they took the livestock out of the city as they'd been instructed. And then um, Joshua burned Ai to the ground and reduced, reduced it to a mound of ruins for all time. So it just came into ruination, which is what we want for our enemy. It remains desolate to this day. And then he hanged the king of Ai on a tree until sunset. Then at sunset, Joshua had the corpse taken down, left it lying in front of where the city gates once stood. So the entrance of the city gates to the the city of Ai, the king himself, his body, lay there. They raised a large pile of stones over his corpse, and it remains there to this day. So um, some things that I wrote down, again, I said it was very brutal. Sometimes we have to do things that seem, you know, like we're just cutting off the possibility of this thing raising its head in our life again. There are some things that have been allowed um, in our life that we have to, you know, take an ax to, that it's brutal. We have to be very determined. Um, when they said they took the city quickly and captured it and set it on fire, they weren't dragging their feet. <laughs> You have to be very determined. You have to be obedient. We said that, you know, um, you have to be willing to follow the instructions and do what you're told to do in battle or there would be chaos. And it's very strategic. Um, again, we, you know, we were just mentioning that some people were placed to pull the livestock out. Some people, um, you know, met the inhabitants in the wilderness. Um, it was also very sneaky. <laughs> so again, we talked about this a few, um, I don't know, I lose track of when we talked about it, but I remember saying, you know, sending what, when we were talking about Rahab and sending spies and the strategies of war and our warfare, we have to um, be sneaky at some points. Uh, we have to outwit the enemy, our enemy. And then we have to be united. We cannot do our own thing and we have to have each other's back. And so um, when we battle, we battle in faith. Um, we have to believe that, in, that the victory is given to us as the Lord has said to us before we go out to battle or we don't have a leg to stand on. We don't really even know why we're there. Um, let me just see if there's comments over here before I keep going. Yeah. Yes, so. There he is laying in the city gates. Um, and a pile of stones on his corpse. And now we're going into the next section that says renewal of the covenant at Mount Ebal. Afterward, Joshua built near Mount Ebal a stone altar to Yahweh, the God of Israel. He made it according to the teachings in the law of Moses, Yahweh's servant. Moses had commanded them to build an altar using stones that had not been cut with iron tools. On it, they offered to Yahweh burnt sacrifices and fellowship offerings. And with the Israelites looking on, Joshua inscribed on stones the law which Moses had written. He wrote the law back on the stones here. Joshua and all Israel, look at who's listed here. Think of our nation today in 2021, all of our nation, all of Israel, including their elders, their officials, their judges, stood on either side of the ark, both native born citizens and immigrants alike, 
faced the Ark of the Covenant of Yahweh and the Levitical priests who carried it. In front of half of them stood Mount Gerizim, um, on page 28, and in front of the other half stood Mount Ebal, as Yahweh's servant Moses commanded at first to bless the people of Israel. And afterward, Joshua read aloud all the words of the law, the blessings and the curses. Um, this is found in Deuteronomy 27 and 28. Um, he read all of that aloud to them, exactly as it was written in the scroll of the law. He read aloud every word that Moses had commanded, and all the assembly of Israel heard it. So they all were there. The judges were there. Um, the, the city officials were there. Um, everybody was in unity. Everybody was underneath the commandments of God. Um, the women, the children, and even the foreigners who had accompanied them. So um, that is the end of chapter eight. And that's where we leave the Israelites with Joshua reading to them the law, all of them standing there around the ark facing them, everybody included, women, children, men, foreigners, um, you know, judges, lawgivers, strategic people, leaders, um, and of course the Levitical priests, all gathered together after this battle, all acknowledging who God is to them, all giving him honor, setting up an altar, setting up again a place of worship where they would again, come in and proclaim that it is God alone that has saved them. It is God alone who has been on their side and ensured the victory for them. And that is what you and I need to do today. Recognize and come together and believe and trust that it is God alone who gives us the victory. May he make us victorious. May he give us tenacity, tenacious spirits. May he position us. May he give us each um, a place in the battle. And may we all be looking out for each other as the word of God is held up over us like that spear that Joshua had until the battle is won. And may we believe and go out underneath the word of God believing that it is truth and it will um, cut away our enemy, so to speak, will, and uh, it will deliver us from our enemy. Ah, so, I want to say hello, Melissa. You came and joined us, yay. And I hope that everyone's excited and continuing um, on in this book. Tomorrow will be in chapter nine, reading about the Gibeonites. Gibeonites. Um, well, I'll just say the Gibeonites are opposed to God, so there's some more battle to come and. Uh, we'll be able to root out some more things that shouldn't be there <laughs> as we look at the Gibeonites. Um, that's all for today. It was kind of short, huh? Not the 30 minute, maybe just 20 today. Hey, Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for these people. Thank you for the ones who come on later um, in the middle of the night, wherever they live. We just thank you, Lord, that you, you've given this us this platform that we can come together in your word. And we trust you for the battle. We trust you for the victory. We trust you uh, that we will keep our eyes on the spear that is held out over 
the warfare until it is subsided and we see it uh, lowered. Give us the victory, give us insights, give us tenacity, give us strength, give us joy. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And um, give us unity. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, see you tomorrow. Have a great day.